All right, so this gives us an idea of the position properties. Uh, I want to move on and talk about something called case statements, which is a whole separate category of things to talk about. But before I do that, I want to review what the if-else statements do, and we learned about that yesterday. All right, so let's just review. You can see this code right here on how to do if and else. Um, and this is sort of general stuff, right? The way this works is you say if, and then you provide the computer with a condition, uh, a question for it to test. And then the computer says if the condition is true, then it does this stuff uh, right under where it says if then. And if it's not true, it does the stuff after the else statement. So basically, you ask the computer a question. And if the answer is true, then it does the stuff on the top. And if the answer is false, then it does the stuff on the bottom. So here's a good example of how this might work. Let's say you have a text box. Uh, and if it, you say, if textbox1.text is equal to yo, 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 then a message box will come up that will say, what up, homie G? But else, if, if it doesn't say yo, 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 then a message box will come up saying, what'd you say? Because it doesn't understand what you said. So an if statement asks a question. And if, if the question is true, then it does the top thing. And if you have an else in there, then it does the bottom thing if the question is not true. On the other hand, we have these things called case statements, which are a lot like if and else statements, except they're a little bit more powerful. Uh, they can do a little bit more. And the reason why a case statement is valuable, uh, even though it's just another type of conditional expression, is that it can have many different paths. Right? We just saw in the if and else statement that, here I'll show you, that um, there are two paths. One if the condition is true, and one if the condition is false. Right? However, with a case statement, you can have many, many different paths. So rather than, than checking to see if a text box says one thing or if it doesn't say that thing, it can check many different things that should say things. So this is how a case statement is used. And so let's take a few moments to really look at this carefully because uh, it's a lot of stuff all at once. Okay, so we start a, a, a case statement with the phrase select case. Okay, and that's telling the computer, hey, I'm doing a case statement here. And then right after that, you put in a variable. You can also put in a property of, a, of, a, of an object or a variable, either one, a variable or, or a property. Okay, and you say, all right, so I'm selecting the case of that variable. And then below, we have all these different things that say case, case, case. And after each case, we put the value uh, that we're interested in. So, for example, if the, let's, let's say we have some variable that's called, uh, you know, my variable one. Okay, then we can say case one and then if the if, if if the variable is equal to one then the the code under that first case statement will go if the variable is equal to two then the code under that second one will go if the variable is equal to three then the code under the third variable will go and you can have as many of those cases as you want and then all you do at the end is you say end select it's a little bit confusing uh, so i want to show you an example so you can get an idea of how this works so I'm going to go back to that idea I had before with this sort of digital therapist, right, which will say nice things to you when you're having a bad day and, and keep you happy when you're having a good day. Um, so, for example, let's say we have one text box on the form, right, and the user puts in, uh, you know, that they're having a good day, they put good. If they're having a bad day, they put bad. If they're having a great day, they put great, whatever. So we say select case because we're going to use a case statement. And then in here we put the thing we want to evaluate. Right? And we want to know what's, we want to, the, the program to do different things based on what the user puts in the text box. Right? So they put, say, hello, or they, let's say they put good in the text box because they're having a good day. So we say, all right, if, if the case is good, so if the text box one dot text is good, then we want it to do something. Right? We want it to say a message box that says, great, you know, you're happy, whatever. All right, but if the case is wonderful, we want to say, oh, yeah, you know, this is a really happy day. But if the text box says awful, then we want to keep them happy. We say, I'm so sorry, and I wish you'd feel better, and that's the end. Okay, so how does this work again? We say select case, then we put either a variable up there or we put a property of a, of a text box or any other object, right? And then uh, we all of the different cases that we throw in there are the different options for what the person could put in, right? And based on the different options, we can put code that will only execute if the user um, puts in that piece of, of, of text for this example. So, for example, in this one, it says textbox1.text. So if the textbox1.text is good, then only this code will execute. None of this other stuff will happen. Okay. 
And then uh, if, 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 the, if the text box one says wonderful, then only this message box will go. None of the other ones will. And then after this message box goes, it jumps all the way to the bottom and keeps going. Okay, so only one message box will ever show up here. All right, so a little bit more case statements. I just want to take that same example and extend it a little bit further. One thing that's really nice about case statements is that you can also use that same sort of else concept that we used in if statements, which says, you know, if it's not that, then do this. So you can have specific cases like case good, case wonderful, case awful, whatever. But then you can also have a special one, which is called case else. And in this case, no matter if the, if the user didn't put in good, didn't put in wonderful, didn't put in awful, let's say they put in something, whatever, we didn't understand what it was, and the computer will say, I don't understand. And so that's different from the original cases where it's a very specific thing. If the user writes good, then it does, you know, the code associated with that. But in the case else is as long as the user puts anything in that's not specifically listed here, here, or here, then the case else will catch and this piece of code will execute. Okay, so I want to show a quick example about uh, how to use these case statements in practice, and then you can go ahead and get started with, with what's coming to you. Um, so what I've done is I've got a little uh, text box here, it's called text box one, and I've got a, a button that I can press, and so what the user is supposed to do is write lower, middle, or upper in the text box, and then if they press the button, it'll tell them what street the school is on, uh, the lower school, the middle school, or the upper school. So in this case, right, since we have three options instead of two, it's nice to use a case statement which can have more than two different code paths, right? So to use a case statement, we start by saying select case, and then we type in the thing we want to evaluate, right? The user is putting their information in text box one, so that's what we'll put in there. And of course, we're using the text property of the text box, not the whole text box itself. All right. Uh, now, there are a bunch of different cases for what the user might put in there. They can put in case upper, right? They can put in case lower, and they can put in case middle. And between uh, the cases is where the code goes, right? So if they do enter upper, we want to send them a message box that tells them, you know, what street the upper school is on, which is Essex Street. And if the lower school is entered, then we provide them with the name of the lower school, which is, or the, the street that it's on, which is Webster Avenue. Okay, and if it's the middle school, well, that's on Franklin Street. Oops. Okay, now here's an important one, right? If we were to run the program right now, it would work just fine, right? We can put in upper, and out would come Essex Street. We could put in middle, and out would come Franklin Street, right? But what if I put in something totally wrong, like something that didn't exist, like the college, the, the Prospect Hill Academy College, right? If I pressed it, nothing happens, right? So we could add another little piece. We could add a case else, which will be if the if the user puts in anything at all. And of course, we don't put this else in quotes because that else is, 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 is code to the computer. If the user puts in anything else, we can tell them, check spelling, because they didn't spell it correctly. All right, so now if the user puts in, let's say they misspell uh, lower, they spell it like L-U-W-E-R, well, it says they need to check their spelling, okay? So the most important thing about a case statement is only one of these message boxes is going to show up depending on what the text box one dot text is. If it's upper, this will show up. If it's lower, this will show up. And then after that, the code will jump down to after the end select and keep going from then on. All right, so that does it for uh, case statements and position properties. Um, the, uh, the, the only vocabulary that you have here, uh, I'm just going to say this out loud, so hopefully you're paying attention, is uh, case statement and the top and left properties. So there's three there, case statement, top property, and left property. Um, and that, that, those are three important pieces of vocab for your sheets, so make sure you don't forget to do them. Uh, there are some assignments coming up. Uh, that you can look at on Edmodo so you know what to do. They should be fun and interesting examples. Uh, so go ahead and uh, get going.